Number four, know your boundaries in relationships. And so this is about having frame as a man. And it's one of the most important things because if you're gonna establish yourself as a leader in a relationship, you have to hold the frame first and then bring a woman into your life. I'm not saying that's the only way they can work, but in, in this day and age, for the most part, that's the way it's gonna happen. I am once again an outlier in this regard that I married at I, when I had nothing. I had no, I had no frame per se, meaning I didn't have any resources, but I had frame in my attitude. And I'll tell you what I mean in a moment. I was a 23 year old kid. I got married at 23. I didn't know any better. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm impulsive. It all worked out. And that's why I have all this to share with you guys because I, I, I learned this stuff in retrospect. I look back and I'm like, man, if I had to reverse engineer why relation, my relationship works and most people relationship don't work, these are some of the things. Establishing boundaries in your relationship. What does that mean? That means, hey, woman, I need you to understand that God comes first in my life, mission in submission to God's will for me comes second, and you and our relationship and what we're building together is third. And it doesn't diminish that as a value. In fact, by having that be third, you elevate it. If you put your woman first and you put your relationship first, you denigrate it. You elevate your relationship by putting God first, putting your mission second, and putting, the, putting your relationship under the umbrella, under the mantle, under the protection of God and your mission. You have to establish that boundary very early on in your relationship because if you don't, first of all, she's going to expect you to put her on a pedestal and you, especially if you're fornicating, especially if you're having sex, especially if she's your drug dealer and you're getting hits from this chick, you're going to want to put her first. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to lose those goods. I don't want to lose that good feeling. I don't want to lose my easy nut busting with this chick. That's what happens when you don't value God over yourself. Because if you put, here's another thing too that a lot of red pillars say that's wrong. Put yourself first. If you put yourself first instead of God first, your relationship's gonna fail also because when you make yourself your own God, a number of things happens. Number one, you're held to no standard. When you make yourself the God of your life, you're held to absolutely no standard. So there's no boundaries for you, thus no boundaries in your relationship to submit to the will of the Lord, to be a godly man, and by putting God as your head, you now not only establish boundaries and direction and mission for your life and guidance and grace from above, but also you then, you then bring that authority, you carry that authority forward through the natural law into your relationship with your woman. Women want to respect men. They want to. They want to look up to men. You know how you know, it, no matter what women tell you, you know how you know women want to look up to a man? They prefer taller guys. It's not arbitrary that women prefer taller men. Women don't want men that are shorter than them. Women don't want a man that they look down to, look down at. But a man that is not looking up is not worthy to look up to. God mission women those are the first most important boundaries that you must have and i'll add two more as they relate more to her first the first one is all about god your mission and then her but now that we're talking about her you got you need two things two things that are unbreakable that are that are how do we say they are break deal breakers this is deal breakers if these two things that i'm about to share with you aren't established it's a deal breaker she must be honest and have respect. Honest and have respect. Let's break that down. Let's unpack that for a moment. In terms of honesty, if she lies to you about small things, she gonna lie to you about big things. If she lie, if you catch her in small lies or just slight fabrications or embellishments, guarantee you what she's using is what the red pillars call the rationalization hamster she don't think that she's doing anything wrong when she's lying to you about small things because of because of that paradigm because of the way she's thinking so she's going to carry that 
mechanism by which she does small dishonest things into big dishonest things. She could very easily go have an affair and have total justification in her mind about why that's right and why she shouldn't tell you. Women rationalize. All of us rationalize, especially today where most men think like women. Most men, we are, when I talk about women and, and, and things that are associated primarily with a women's mindset, you gotta understand that that's not even only with women today. This is why we're talking about biblical masculinity. This is, this is masculinity from 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. Today, when we're living in the last days, most men think like women. So a lot of the things that I'm blaming women or I'm, I'm, regard, I'm saying in regard to women, a lot of us are this way too. And I'm no, I'm no exception. I've caught myself. I used to be pure beta male. And I think back now and I cringe at some of the justifications I would make for the sins that I was harboring in my life. So it's all of us. But if you catch, if you catch her just excuse, trying to be excused for small things, guarantee, bro, she ain't being honest. She's not being honest about other things respect this is a big one because this is a, this is this is a hot topic in our culture right because we've been taught if you're anything like me i grew up in the 1980s in america and it's worse today than it was in the 1980s but i remember how it was always is this and this is this is this is this is the advice that we get as, as little boys but it's the wrong advice and i'm gonna show you why what do you always hear from your parents who are all blue pill, who all uh, are, 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 are brainwashed by the Marxist culture, right? I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole, but it's all an ideological subversion to destroy the culture. Your parents and your school teachers and the media, respect women, respect women, respect women, respect women. That mantra in itself is a perversion because it doesn't work that way. Respect goes up. Remember I spoke about how women want a man that they can look up to? Up, because they want to respect. Respect goes this way. That's why in the Bible, in one of the Ten Commandments is children respect your parents. It doesn't say uh, parents respect your children. And it doesn't mean that you have a disrespectful attitude or that you're denigrating to that which is below you because there's, there's a contrast. I'm gonna share that in a moment. But respect always moves up. That mantra, respect women, is a perversion. It's, it's backwards. It's a lie that has caused us to be in the depolarized situation that we are in with women. Women are supposed to respect men. And you know how you earn that respect? Love. Love, have you ever heard that love is like gravity? This is beautiful, man. It's like, it's poetic, it's religious, it's scientific, it's amazing. Respect goes up. Love comes down. Love like gravity sinks. The same way that a, a parent loves the child, but the, par the child can't love the parent. Children don't know how to love their parents the same way. They could never love their parents the way that they're, even me as an adult and my parents are 70 years old, they love me more than I'll ever love them, but I respect them. And as I've grown older, my respect for them has grown even more because I grew up in a culture that teaches you to disrespect your parents, don't respect your parents. So I didn't respect my parents. I didn't want to respect my parents. I respected them because my dad had a heavy hand. But I didn't want to respect them because I live in a culture that teaches children not to respect, the, the no respect is, is offered up. Here's another thing too. We, when we put the children above us as well and it's all about respect children. Children earn respect, deserve respect. Children don't deserve respect. You do not deserve respect, you deserve my love. I deserve your respect, especially if I carry myself in a frame of pouring out love. It's hard to respect somebody that's above you if they don't love you. But somebody that loves you earns your respect, right? Think about, like I used to play football and I had this coach and, or I had many coaches and you could, the, I, the coaches that loved the team, that loved us as players and you knew it because they put their heart and soul on the line and they would, they would cry themselves when we lose. Those coaches gain our greatest respect. The coaches I respect the most were the coaches that love me the most, that love the team the most, that love the mission of winning the most. 
that's how you know that respect is, is concomitant with love. And it goes this way. Respect goes up. Love comes down. So don't, this is a paradigm that needs to shift. And that's why I'm harping on this a lot more. Do not respect women. It's not about respecting women. It's about loving women. And women need to understand. And you get to demonstrate your love so that you can command respect in the opposite direction. Which brings us to number five, finally. Because this is really important as it relates to love and respect. Because most of us got that backwards, right? We respecting the women and we want them to love us. I don't know, I, I don't totally understand this before I get into number five. I don't totally understand this, but I get it. Like I, 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 I assent to it, but I don't totally understand it. But a lot of the red pill guys will say that a woman will never, women will never love a man the way he wants to be loved. And I understand that because a man will love a woman, the, will love a woman the way she can't love him back. It's funny because even in, in with regard to polarization and sexual sexual polarity, men, a masculine man is attracted to a a vulnerable, doe-eyed, uh, like I don't want to say helpless, but like a girl that needs to be saved. That's why they say damsel in distress. But these women these days, they don't you know they don't they don't ever they don't ever show that kind of vulnerability. So you're dealing with these tattooed sailor hoes. Who uh, you know have, have they swear like sailors? They got tattoos and pierces and all over their face, and they drink, and they curse, and they just they acting they don't not acting vulnerable, not acting feminine. But anyway, so with that whole that whole contrast between love and and respect, which is so important, the final the last and final one, which is really important, 